Yo, what's good guys? Welcome back to yet another video. Today I'm going to be discussing this supply and demand zone strategy. It is a day trading strategy. Um, I've been using this for a number of years and it seems to be one of the most high probability day trading setups there is out there. It's very easy to learn. So hopefully I'm going to go through those details in this video so all of you can understand this strategy and hopefully implement it yourselves so you can profit as I do. So just before I get into this video, if you haven't checked out my Instagram as yet, which is trader journey underscore official, be sure to check that out as I provide daily updates, tips and tricks for trading on a daily basis. So to, to start off this video, guys, I've got this chart up here, which is Apple. I'm going to remove all these drawings and start fresh so you guys can understand the beginning process and, and the end process and what you want to be looking at. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and remove all these drawings like so. So you've got your bare minimum chart here. You don't even for this particular strategy, you don't even need any other indicators. You can make it as simple as possible so you guys can get easy entries and easy exit points. So what I'm also going to do is just go ahead and remove these indicators as well. Um, on a separate video, I will show you guys what you can combine with this strategy if you want some further confirmation before entering these trades. But I'm going to go ahead and remove um, these completely. Just bear with me whilst I remove this particular indicator. Cool. So we have a very bare, bare bone Apple chart here, which this is the four hour chart, but I'm going to talk you through exactly the, f the process of using this strategy. So what you want to begin doing for drawing your supply and demand zones, you want to start on the largest time frame as possible. So right now we're on the four hour chart. I'm going to go ahead and go to the weekly chart. That is as far out as you need to go with this particular strategy. Now, what you want to do with this larger time frame, which is the weekly time frame, you just want to simply chart a price level using a simple line um, line tool, just simply line up the highest price in that sort of range that you're looking to trade and the lowest price point. That's simply what you want to do. That's the easiest and quickest part of this process. So you go on your weekly time frame simply chart the highest price and the lowest price. You don't want to go far back as as March, for instance, in this particular chart for for whatever share or stock you're looking at. You want to make sure you only go back a few months so you can understand the key demand area and the key supply area. So simply go ahead and chart the highest point on your chart and the lowest point. Next up, you guys want to go go along your chart and just see if there's any mid range points which are worth charting on your on your um, stock, for instance, here seems to be a key area. It's touched two times. As you can see, it's touched once here. It's touched twice here and it's gone through a few candles and it's almost touched another candle. So that is a good mid range to chart as well. So you want to chart your highest, lowest and roughly a mid range where there seems to be some resistance and support, which you can see here clearly on the chart. So next up, you want to go down to your one day chart. Now, this is where it gets a bit interesting because you are easily able to see key supply areas and key demand areas. Now, as you can see here um, towards the top where Apple almost reached all time highs or broke all time highs, we saw a reversal and supply broke the area down. So what you want to try and do is try again to see if there's any other price points you can label here. This is a key price point. As you can see, it's touched the candle here and it's touched the candle there. That is a very good supply area and a very clean supply area for you to have charted. As you go down to the smaller time frames, you can see that there is some slight variances in the all time high price, which you can then chart as well. You should always chart every sort of key price point, which is your highest and lowest price point. And if it varies slightly, you should chart that as well. So then you want to look towards the bottom. Is there any key area that you can chart here? It's not very clear at the moment, so you can just leave it for now to see what it looks like on a smaller time frame. Um, this looks like it's going to be a key area here and here, but there's no key price level for you to chart. So you, you wouldn't want to chart that as of yet. Again, you want to go down the middle, see if there's any other price points that are worth charting. Um, for instance, here, this looks like a key area. How many times the candles have, have gone through this particular and touched it is several times. So that is a very key area. 
again towards the top this seems like a key area as well so it's worth charting that so with this particular strategy guys you want to start as i say on the larger time frame work your way down so now this is this is as probably as accurate you're going to get it for now so you've got some key key ranges which apple is trading in here which is a very good um sort of thing to notice here and a good observation to make so you want to make these key observations understand where the stock is ranging understand if it's an uptrend you can actually start to chart this as and when you see it and this can be combined with this supply and demand strategy for instance this seems to be a upward trend you can simply chart it on there if you wanted to i'm not going to do that for this video but this is purely to to maximize and capitalize on the supply and demand zones so from this one day area you've charted all the key levels you can then simply move down towards the four hour chart now this is again it gets even more interesting as you go towards the smaller time frames because these key price levels which you've charted soon start to create a picture and soon start to create an image of what you would like to be trading so again you want to be doing the same thing and the larger time frames work towards the bottom sees that any key area now here there's some more price levels that seem to become available which you need to be charting you can see there was strong rejection at this price point and you can see there was some rejection here and there was a candle and a few candles that went through it and again when we saw the first initial breakout this was a key area of resistance and it broke through so there you go now that is as simple as it gets for setting your price levels now once you have all your price levels set from your weekly daily and four hour chart you then want to start creating some zones now you just want to make sure you finish off charting your price levels make sure there's no other key areas like for instance here this is a very key area in this mid-range check again make sure you've not missed any price levels as it's very easy to do so just make sure you've done it as accurate as possible here seems to be another key area it's worth charting um, additional ranges even though it's not as accurate it's just worth putting it on there so it's it's an area which you can consider as a profit target later on in this strategy which i'll also get into so there you go you've gone from your weekly time frame to your daily time frame and you've gone to your four hour time frame some of you i do know a lot of traders tend to go down to the two hour maybe even the one hour um, if you're day trading and i go straight from the four hour to the one hour this is where your day trading is particularly key to maximize the use of your one hour time frame but for setting your zones and your strategy you want to be using the four hour time frame and your one day time frame so again on your one hour chart simply go through any key areas of support and resistance you want to be charting you should have captured majority of them on your larger time frames, but you just want to go through here and just double check is there any key areas of resistance and support now you can see this seems to be a very strong area so it should be very easy to spot with your with the, with the naked eye you should be able to just spot these ranges and simply put them on there if there's some areas which you're not it's not particularly clean you don't have to trade them you don't have to put these price target price levels on here but just try and be as accurate as possible you're not going to get it 100 percent accurate all all the time every day so just try as much as possible to get it as accurate as you can um i'm just going to go ahead and put this price level here as well seems to be a key area of resistance cool so that is as simple as it gets that's taken under nine minutes to chart those levels so once you have those price levels all the way down to your one hour from skip your four hour to your one hour you can do the two hour and three hour if you if you have the time to um, so once you've charted everything down to the one hour you then simply want to go back to your weekly time frame now this is where you start to set your zones you start to set your demand zones and you start to set your supply zones i'm going to quickly get into the definition of what i mean by supply zone and demand zone demand zone is where you have buyers sitting there waiting to purchase the stock and push the price higher a supply zone is where you have sellers waiting to sell the stock 
and the price is going to be pushed forward. So you have selling pressure at your highest areas usually and you have buying pressure at your lowest areas usually and that is simple supply and demand economics. Um, you can look up the definition on the internet and supply and demand will fluctuate price depending on whether there is demand on, or depending on whether there is supply. Price moves depending on that. Now if supply equals demand that is where you reach equilibrium and that is where your price has a constant rate which is very rare that happens in any stock I've never seen that it does happen occasionally where price just seems to just hit a certain level and stay there and that is where your supply reaches demand but with these volatile stocks such as Apple this is where you can this is where you can exploit these areas and make your profits and this is why it suits us as options traders or day traders to make use of these key areas these key areas as well are sometimes known as imbalance zones imbalance zones in the sense where you have supply more more sellers than buyers or you have more buyers than sellers so sometimes i refer to them as imbalance zones which you'll come to know in my previous videos or later videos so simply on your weekly time frame guys this is where you want to be setting your weekly supply and demand zones now for each time frame you will have supply and demand zones but you want to specifically um, sort of label them as weekly time zones daily demand zones um, sorry daily time zones four hour time zones or one hour time zones. so you can specifically label those and i will show you that how to do that on trading view right now so simply click the rectangle you should have a rectangle tool on your trading view simply click that and start start labeling your zones now what you want to do from your highest point is start at your highest point and work towards your next next key area this is your next key sub, next key price level here. You want you don't want to go with short is here. Your weekly weekly zones are usually larger than your daily or smaller time frames. So you want to go down to your next price level which is here. Now this you can tell is a key area of supply. As the price reached that area, the price broke down and you had a massive sell off. That is a key supply area for me. Um, and it's a very easy one to spot. So I would simply highlight that rectangle, put it in red. And what I would also do now, this is very important. You go into your settings, go into text, and this is where you want to type in weekly. And you want to type in weekly supply. This is so you know whether the price is ranging in a very larger time frame. So you want to make sure you label these correctly. So weekly supply is there. You can see it's labeled it clearly. This is making trading very simple and very easy um, next up guys you want to go to your lowest point in your particular chart and simply label that area now this as I say you start at the bottom of the price and you work towards the next key price level your next key price level is from 107 103 is your lowest point 107 is your next key price level you want to chart that and now this guys as you may have guessed is your demand area so you want to go into your settings um, Actually, just let me change that to green. So I usually have my demand areas green. Um, it just makes it easy to understand. And then you want to go into your settings and simply go into text and type in. Let's put in four hour there. So that is your weekly weekly demand. And it's as simple as that, guys. You've gone from your lowest point. Oh, I've made a slight mistake here. Let me just change that. So you've gone from your weekly demand and your weekly supply. It's as easy as that, guys. And as you can see, this trading range is a very easy trading range to make use of on a weekly time frame. It's as easy as that. You could trade this to the top and as it came down to demand, you could have traded it up. And these price levels could have been your profit targets. This could have been profit target one. This could have been profit target two. This could have been profit target three, even profit target four. And as it broke down into demand again, that could have been your, you could have bought the dip and rode it back up to profit target one, profit target two, profit target three. As it came down, it reached support here. Now you can see it didn't come back down all the way to the weekly demand area. Now you'll see as we go down to the smaller time frames, this is where we create other zones for the smaller time frame. So hopefully this is making sense to most of you guys as we work towards the smaller time frames. Now what you'll notice is as you as the price moves and goes into different different um, future time time lapses, 
you'll notice that previous supply areas which you may have charted on for example a one day chart which we're on now may reverse from a supply zone into a future demand zone so you want to make note of that guys because you want to change the colors of the charts and rename the charts as price moves so for instance here we as i previously showed you guys there is a clear uptrend in apple it's reached a supply area and we've seen a sell-off so very easy not many people would think apple would have this reversal a lot of a lot of beginner traders would still probably catch it at the top and then lose out so this is how these areas help the beginner and prevent any big losses so now you're on your one day chart you went from your weekly to the one day chart now you want to see is there any other key areas of demand or supply um, some are very easy to spot some are harder to spot and some you'll notice as you go to smaller time frames so you want to get back to your rectangle tool again and see is there any key areas of sell-offs and key areas of rallies and for me key one is probably around here this is a key area of demand as you can see it was a previous supply area because we saw these huge sell-offs but now this is turned into a key area of demand now i don't like personally highlighting the full price level across i like to make sure it's spotted as a new area of demand so i make sure it's only highlighting that key area some people like to highlight the whole thing that's completely up to you um, but i like to go from that point where it's reversed into a demand zone and make sure it's highlighted throughout throughout that again you want to make sure you label it correctly and this is now a daily daily demand simple as that guys and now the reason why this is very key is as we've seen the sell off from the weekly supply area we might see it come into the daily demand and reject and come back up now that is a good point of entry and that is why this charting your different zones on different time frames is very important um, again there are you if, if 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 the price below that demand zone is there you want you don't really want to pay attention to that because price is currently above that so there's no point in labeling price levels below it you can then continue to rechart these areas below it once it breaks below that previous demand area that is a that is just an easy way of doing it um, and if you also want to be as accurate as possible with this you can also highlight previous area of supply so you know that is a key area that you just want to be watchful of um, of that area because this seems to be where there's huge imbalances and can see huge huge moves towards the downside and huge moves towards the upside so you can say you can label this for instance as a previous previous daily supply this is this is being very accurate guys you don't have to do this you can be a lot more simple with it but i just like to be accurate um, with all my sort of trades to ensure that they're high probability trades now yeah you've gone to your you've gone to your daily demand you've gone from your weekly to your daily now you simply want to go down to your four hour and this is where you can make use of day trades this is where your day trades are most profitable now you'll notice with your when you go down one more time frame you notice you've missed some sort of key area key range which you could spot you didn't spot on the daily but you've now spotted it on the four hours so you can simply adjust that adjust your dailies to make sure it, it captures that whole area this is why i am moving this demand and moving this supply because you can understand i've missed that area you won't see that on the bigger time frame which is why it's key to go down to the smaller time frame so you can understand what is happening now as you go down to your four hour chart there are some very very interesting things you can do here what i like to do here um, is get out your rectangle again and in your key areas of demand and supply you want to rechart those because you've spotted some key areas which see huge sell-offs as for instance here this is another four hour sell-off so you can make use of this trade in a four hour time frame and as it reaches that that four hour supply zone you can make use of that so simply chart it in red and as you can see it then charts it in a darker red so you can spot that um, and that is a key area of supply again with the demand area you can see there's another key area of demand within the within the daily time frame you can go ahead and chart that as well so i simply do that chart it in green again and as you can see it's a darker green so that helps you just identify 
the difference between your daily and your four hour but you can play these intraday levels and you can you can maximize that and you can buy these dips and you can see there's a huge rallies as it's hit, hit that level of demand so guys that is that is that and that just shows you can make use of these supply and demand zones in these key areas and just as they enter these imbalance zones you can play it to the upside or rather if you're in the supply area you can play it to the downside so for instance with apple as it exited the weekly supply you knew there would be a big sell-off and you could have rode that from 134 all the way down to 131 a very easy move three dollar move that's all you need to make consistent profits guys and make use of these areas now um you want you what, what you want to do as well once you've done your four hour analysis you then want to go down to your one hour and this is where you can make use of further imbalance zones for your daily trading um so you want to make sure you spot is there any key areas of supply if you want to spot any any key areas of demand now this for me this small area here seems to be an area of supply as it's area of demand sorry as it's broken through um so this is a key area here for the one hour time frame this is one area you want to watch because if you see this sell-off happening and it reaches this area of demand you then want to consider if the volume is high enough to then play it back to the upside to that supply area on the one hour time frame um, and as you'll notice as you're sort of going through these areas you want to make sure you capture any other price levels which you may have missed and i'm going to show you an example of that so this is your hourly demand we type that on there so everything is very easy everything is labeled everything is um very strict with the levels you've used so you cannot miss any particular area so again like i said if there's any key areas of support and resistance you want to just go ahead and capture those so you can understand if you need to make any other supply and demand zones these price levels are ready for you to make use of them and as you can see i simply charted this price level looking at this area here but as you zoom out what has happened previously this has previously been a key area and you can see that here is see it's it's very interesting to note that any historical supply and demand zone seems to be intact this supply area which we saw in the weekly chart it happened previously and we saw a huge sell-off and the same thing happened so historical zones are very key to understanding imbalances and capitalizing and making your making your 100 percent returns this is how you capitalize on these areas for instance in the demand area as well if you caught you could have caught this twice you could have caught this demand area set your stop loss below the bottom of the the supply, demand area played it first time played it the second time as it hit that demand zone it rejected and continued to fly upwards to a daily supply area so this is how you capture these moves um it's very interesting that these these sort of repeated times how many times has, has this been repeated um again i've just quickly labeled here a price level you can simply then chart again there is a demand zone here and this is on the one hour time frame so make sure you've captured both price levels this is your one hour time frame and you can simply chart that as your hourly demand now some of you probably are asking well when is your entry and exit point when is, when do you enter the trade when do you exit the trade now if you were say for instance buying at the dip here in the demand you want to hit as soon as it hits that line or rejects that line with strong volume that is your point of entry now your stop loss would be for me at the bottom of your or at the bottom of your demand zone the reason being is because you can see from here previously sometimes the band has to take till it reaches that bottom level before it rejects sometimes it reaches mid midpoint in that demand area you can chart that as well if that gives you some further comfort in your trading you can chart that area as well and you know your stop loss can be anywhere from there to the bottom of that particular area of demand um, same goes with supply if you entered at the break of the supply zone your stop loss wants to be at the top the top of that area sometimes some you, you might want to do it shorter than that maybe midway or a third through the supply zone if you just want to be extra safe to ensure you don't you you minimize your losses you can do that as well if you're sticking to a particular risk management strategy for instance a stop loss of 10 percent you can stick with that as well it's completely completely up to you 
Um, but you can see just from me charting these areas, you can see how you can make use of these areas and these zones to maximize your profits. You can simply use these price levels, use these zones, and your strategy can be set up for high probability trades only and make use of these larger moves. Now, you can use all of these zones to your advantage, whether it's the weekly supply, weekly demand. You know though, guys, that if you're using the weekly supply and weekly demand, larger the time frame, larger the move. So if something enters a weekly supply or weekly demand, you're gonna expect a larger move than for instance, an hourly demand or a four hour demand or four hour supply or hourly supply, if that, I hope that makes sense. So the bigger the time frame of your zone, the larger the move. So if something's entering a weekly supply or weekly demand, expect a larger move. So that is why if you, you can use the same strategy for swing trading, for instance, you can use it for day trading. I wouldn't advise you use it for scalping because scalping is just, you would have to keep charting the levels and it's not as, um, it's, it's just not as accurate and it's not as efficient. The, that way of trading isn't as efficient as for instance this. You can think about this a lot more than for instance with scalping as you'd have to continuously, continuously um, chart these zone areas. So I hope that makes sense guys. This is a very quick and easy way to trade a high probability trading setup and then um, along with this you can combine my other strategies which I've mentioned in my other videos such as trends, um, such as use of indicators and that will just add further confirmation to these trades. So a very exciting, a very easy way of understanding the strategy. I hope I've explained it well. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. Hit me up on Instagram, traderjourney underscore official. Um, just to let you also guys know of that I've released recently my Discord chat where I will be providing classes and help to any beginner trader. I will be opening up a other form of membership which will just purely be signals for instance with this strategy or my other strategies where I will be providing anyone who's looking to trade with some signals. If you are interested in that let me know in, in on Instagram or in the comments and I will pr provide you guys with the um, the details to set that up and join become a member of that community. So thanks very much for watching. I hope this has helped. If anyone's got any questions like I said let me know and I will get back to every single one of you. Thanks very much for watching. I will catch you on the next one. Take care. Goodbye.